Good morning, Barbados. First, I want to thank God for this opportunity to speak to and to speak for the people of Barbados. I have spent over 40 something years in the National Insurance Office. Up to yesterday, I was at the Hilton Hotel speaking to young people about national insurance. Because unfortunately, the department has a shortage of persons who are capable of really representing. Now since 2015, all 40 something people at National Insurance Office retired. Out of a staff complement of about 300, 40 something gone home. They went home not because some of them wanted to go home, but they went home because they got sick and fed up of that place. I have a lady right in front of me who works there so she can testify of the situation that exists in the National Insurance Office. I want to understand the picture that I'm going to pay for you. Now, it's a situation where National Insurance is going a total board whereby the staff of the National Insurance Office will not be ma managed by central government. Now, it has not gone aboard as yet. It means that the professionals in the National Insurance Office who know what should happen and what should not happen, they are going home. They are not being consulted about National Insurance, about your money, you know, and about my money. And I'm here not just for those who are working, but I'm here for the pensioners of Barbados. But my mother is 92. And my great aunt is 108. So I know what it is to be around old people and understand the fight that they made for our country. But the Barbados Workers Union and the NUPW, I'm going to be Pacific, have continued to sell out Barbados. And I make no apologies for it. For the simple reason that both of them have a permanent seat on the National Insurance Board. So for whatever decisions that has to be made by the National Insurance Board, the NUPW and the Barbados Workers Union are party to that decision. Now, if you look at the Sunday Sun, the last Sunday Sun, you're going to see an article there where the Deputy Chairman of the National Insurance Board, Ronald Adams, along with the entire board, are proposing that self-employed people in Barbados be allowed to claim employment injury. No, you all about the sense. We ain't got the sense, them got the sense. But look at this. Now, if you are injured on the job, it means that when you send your claim to National Insurance, you tell National Insurance what happened. So National Insurance will automatically send a report to your workplace to get confirmation of what happened. But I am a, I am a, 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 a self-report person. So I got a body work shop and I am hurt. I said, I am hurt. And I said, yeah, I'm hurt. When I'm working, I said, I am hurt. So I said on the phone to National Thanks, Insurance, God. tell the National Insurance Office, I get hurt when I was working. So National Insurance now takes a form, put my name on it, and send it to me and ask me what happened. That makes sense to you? But hold on a minute. Just, it may seem simple, but you know what can happen? When that form comes into the National Insurance Office, and I tell them that I get hurt at work, I can now get medical expenses and traveling paid for the rest of my life. I can claim this ailment and I can get maybe 50, 60, or 100 thousand dollars out of the National Insurance. I ain't only one body, you know. So you are open up a scheme that you already write off 1.3 billion dollars of. You already gave the pensioners in 2019 when you made a foolish promise. What can I say foolish promise? Because it was a smart promise. What in opposition, you made a promise to the pensioners of Barbados, the non contributing pensioners, that you would give them a raise. So when you gave them the raise, you didn't stop and think that the National Insurance pensioners would have to get a raise. So that's where this one thing start, you know. This thing started in 2019 when the government changed and the patients of Barbados 
we're giving the increase. I'm, I, I'm not against the pension getting increased because every year there's a statutory requirement that the pension and barbers get an increase. So when I heard the prime minister here, they're saying that I can get a cost 11 allowance of about whatever, the prime minister is lying. Because since 2006, 2006, pensioners and barbers have been getting an increase in their pensions almost every year. Check any old person in Barbados and they will tell you that in January of every year they get a little berry. Why? Because it was a, um, a pension reform agreement. When they have pension reform in 2006, that is what happened. So let me travel down the road. You have a situation where they are changing the legislation. Not because it needed to be changed, but because of the deliberate action of the Prime Minister, the NUPW, the Barbers Workers Union, the Barbers Employees Confederation, the Hotel Association, the leader of the, the, um, the, the Chief Labor Officer and the Director of Finance, these are the ones that sit on the board and they sat down, continue to sit down and allow the Prime Minister or whoever to make decisions because I spoke at the Alexander School last year when they had the town hall meetings. Now you have town hall meetings. I would like to believe that when you have town hall meetings, you are asking me to come and give my view. You are asking your boss to come and give his view. You are calling all kind of people the opportunity to come and give their views. But you have already made a decision. What are you going to do? And I can hear the leader of the Barbers Workers Union talking a lot of fancy talk. By the end of the day, she has been very much complacent in selling out the people of Barbados. You wait a minute, so because I remember very well when they had the by election in St. George, when she was running, I heard the Prime Minister on her platform indicating that they're gonna bring up some poor care workers. No, we have people who work in MB who perform a task in this country when you're gonna bring on people and tell them you're paying them a stipend of 400 dollars so they refuse to pay on national insurance for those people you bring on thousands of ash workers but do you know that come the end of this month in the next two weeks all three thousand of the ash workers know a same money they get because they became unemployed on the first of April this year and the Prime Minister was so smart. Listen, go for yourself. Like if you're Prime Minister, we got a very sensible Prime Minister. She's so sensible that she's straight all the way right now. Because it don't happen. You want to take on that insurance. But she knows very well if I send more people the first of April, it means in order for them to qualify to get unemployment, they would have had to pay at least 20 weeks between April and December. So you know what she do? She went back and paid the national insurance between July and December so that I had to pay six weeks and get the unemployment. But you know what happened? As I speak right now, there are workers in Barbados who work is no, I can't say the work for ACC. They work with ACC in the botanical garden. They are still not paying national insurance right now. The government of Barbados has individuals in this country who are working with the government, for the government, by the government, and not a cent is being taken out. Where is the NUPW? Where is the Barbers Workers Union? These are people that are exposed to all the dangers you can think about. You can imagine one of those workers, God forbid, come in contact with some matter whatever, like the young man that died earlier this week, and you can tell me that not a cent, not a cent, because the government of Barbados is chosen not to pay national insurance as I speak for some of the workers and they have the goal, they have the goal to be getting what they're saying that private employers have people working and not paying national insurance. It is not the government, the national insurance department holds the right to determine who is self-employed and who is not. National insurance department and therefore if you deciding when a man can work, when he can lunch, when he go home or even less, he cannot be self-employed. So I'm saying to you, those that are making the decisions for national insurance ain't got a clue 
about National Insurance. But hear this. They have been changing the, the um they have been changing the, 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 the terms and conditions of government workers. Now in 2019, in 2019, they took the staff from ACC, National Sports Council, and some of the others. You have appointed officers in this country. They are appointed. They are paying appointed rates. Again, where is the NDPW? Where is the Barbers Workers Union? They are paying, and they made them no regular employees, just like some person work for Keir Shepherd. But do you know that only on Wednesday of this week, on Wednesday of this week, or Thursday, the staff from BIA got an email. Yes, they got an email whereby they're changing the terms and conditions of the staff at BIA. And they had the audacity to send up an email telling them we're going to have a Zoom meeting. We're going to have a Zoom meeting which is going to last 20 minutes. Now you have a BIA that got was over a thousand people that were working there. You can have a Zoom meeting and you can tell them we want to talk to you but we want to hear from you but you only got 20 minutes. This is the disrespect. The disrespect that we the people of Barbados continue to encounter. I said I have spent 40, over 40 years of my life talking about national insurance, serving the people of national insurance and it hurts me in my belly to see what is happening to my country. I'm going to touch on the ID card situation very quickly. You know why? Now, we have some cultures in Barbados. If you don't mean, go to any post office in Barbados, patient day. Go to any post office, patient day. Go to about half past six in the morning. And you can see people laid up, sorry, gathered around post offices at half past six in the morning. And you wonder, what are people doing this early? That is their social gathering every two weeks. Those people go there every two weeks. So we gotta understand this. In order for national insurance to save money, what they have been doing for years is trying to force the pension of Barbados to send the money to the bank or the credit union. Now we're talking about old people. Now, if all the pensioners in Barbados are forced to send their money to the bank or the credit union, how many banks in St. Lucie? How many banks in St. Lucie? None. How many, how many social banks in St. Peter? None. How many in St. Andrew? None. How many in St. John? None. How many in St. George? None. How many in St. Joseph? None. So you can imagine the old people of Barbados, you are subjecting them to send their money to the bank or the credit union. No. But imagine this. My mother is 92. She never used an ATM card in her life. So therefore, she can't get a pension check no more. She got to go to the bank on mornings to get she, uh, get her money. So my poor mother at night don't go in the bank and stand up in front of the cashier. The first thing that happens is the bank is going to charge her for coming to the dealer. That's the first thing you know. The first thing that happens is the bank is going to charge her for coming to the teller. That's what it's subjecting you want people of my country to. So what happened? My mother can't hear so good. So she stand up at the teller. You know what happened? She said, what are you say? What are, and lay long, long, long. Long, long, long. Because all the pensioners stand up in line. That is what they want to subject all people to. Okay? So I'm saying to you, we have to transfer board now quickly. You have a situation where you want to the pensioners to die. What is wrong? You have the pensioners of Barbados showing you how you carry it. Lord have mercy. What is wrong with that? I'm saying to us, I know that we will be small here. There may be those who are terrified because of what is happening in Barbados. But I beg us never to become silent in our country. My mother was not afraid of the plantation manager when I was a boy. And her son will never be afraid of the prime minister or any other person in this country. But if you kill me, I go in heaven. If you don't kill me, I am going to speak the truth in my country. 